Hey, I'm standing here in front of a pretty grand specimen of a tree uh, that gets a pretty bad rap for a lot of different reasons. This is Pyrus caloriana, the calorie pear. Uh, there are a lot of very well-known cultivars. One cultivar in particular of this tree that is very, very well-known called Bradford, Pyrus caloriana. Bradford, the Bradford pear. Uh, but we're just talking about the calorie pear right now, knowing how to identify the calorie pear just in general. Uh, this is a non-native uh, to North America, uh, and it poses a little bit of a risk, uh, maybe even a severe risk, uh, to our native woodlands, and that's really creeped up over the last 10 to 15 years. Uh, but here I, on the University of Tennessee campus, I'm standing in front of a, a quite large specimen uh, and you can see the form, it's a bit upright, uh, but it does have kind of widespreading branches. Many of the cultivars, like the one I mentioned, Bradford, have very tightly crotched, upward facing uh, forms or habit uh, that actually make them quite susceptible to breakage. And so if there's a windstorm, uh, typically we drive through a neighborhood and we see the Bradford pears have all kind of fallen apart uh, because they've got very poor branching unions because of something called included bark. And, and what happens with included bark is actually when you've got tight branching, the bark actually goes down and actually is included inside and creates less of an attachment uh, for these large stems. And that's why uh, some of these cultivars were popular is because they've got this beautiful vase-like form, uh, but overall they're not, they're not uh, turning into long-lived trees in the landscape. Uh, and so you do want to be careful. There's another reason uh, why uh, Bradford pears, calorie pears in the landscape aren't a preferred tree. Uh, a lot of the cultivars on the market are touted as fruitless. And here I've got an example of a Pyrus calorianus fruit in my hand. You see these little almost pear-like uh, fruits that are on this plant. Uh, but the cultivars that are on the market are touted as fruitless. But what happens is that when we get cross-pollination between those cultivars, it actually produces seedlings uh, that have fruit on them, uh, and it also produces, uh, or at least viable uh, seedlings, uh, and those actually grow back and they have thorns on them as well, and they end up in our native woodland. So Pyrus caloriana, uh, this is oppositely arranged on the stem, really beautiful foliage, known for its spring bloom. Now the spring bloom does not smell that great, uh, which is one thing that people really are kind of, kind of concerned with in the neighborhoods. They don't like the smell of the spring flowering uh, Bradford pear or the calorie pears that are in their neighborhood. Uh, but really, honestly, beautiful foliage. Uh, and the reason that this tree has gotten planted is because it does a lot of the things that we want a home tree to do. It has a spring bloom. It's got a good form for the home landscape. Uh, it has good fall color as well. Uh, so it does have kind of four season interest, uh, but where, where it falls apart is it's weak wooded uh, from a standpoint of its branching habit. It tends to fall apart. Uh, it can be invasive in our native woodlands. And so really this is a plant that we don't want to be planting, but we do need to know how to identify. Here's a landscape tip. The calorie pear is a species of pear tree native to China and Vietnam. It is commonly known for its cultivar Bradford, widely planted throughout the United States and increasingly regarded as an invasive species.